folks. This is Joe Rebello for Rebello's Kempo Karate. And today we're going to be working on some various aspects regarding the Yada Kempo, some specialized weaponry taught within the Kempo that identifies it as Kempo. And then taking these various individual strikes and motions and putting them together in a sequence and utilizing it on various apparatus. Let's get started, shall we? One of the important uh, tools that are in our toolbox as a Kempo practitioner is the back fist or back knuckle, depending which particular martial discipline you may study. What does that mean? It means that when we strike, we have several different parts of our closed fist. We have the top of a fist, we have the front of the fist, we have the back of the fist, and we have the bottom of the fist. Now, the first action we're going to focus on today is the back of the fist here. And again, I'm going to move a little closer here. The two major metacarpals or knuckles of your fist. Now, in certain styles of martial arts, they will use this with body fusion. What does that mean? It means that we're going to keep everything straight from our knuckle to our elbow, keeping our wrist straight. And when we strike, we're going to lift that elbow in a horizontal position. And we're going to strike out with the back of our fist and bring it back in. Like so. Now, that is a back fist. And what it means, not only are the back of my two knuckles, but also the majority of the back of my fist are all being used in play here. So, <coughs> excuse me. So let's take one of our devices. This is a wonderful device from Asian World Martial Arts. This is known as the Target Master. A lot of times, a lot of people have a clapper or, or target pads that they hold. This is a multiple station that you can adjust it with these uh, various knobs to various heights. Uh, you see the assembly also rotates and spins. So uh, let's get an idea with uh, the back fist. So I'm going to line it up here. And I'm going to line the back fist like so. I'm going to hit this red target. I'm going to lift my elbow, pointing it at the target, checking with my other hand below, and strike. Again, I can bring it back in. And I know I, I made it move, so I know the technique works. I've made the apparatus move in some way, shape, or form, so I know I have some power regarding that given strike. So again, I point my elbow up and strike. Hence the back fist. Now, now let's go into what's known as the back knuckle. When I learned at Parker's American Kempo, uh, at Parker's Kempo Karate, again, the wrist was in a flexible mode. Our wrist flexes naturally, right? Our hand moves in and out because of our wrist. So too, we want to utilize a whipping motion. And again, uh, you. In Sal's of Kempo, they only mention whipping with an open hand. I'll just mention the whip-like motion with a closed fist. So here, again, I lift my elbow up, I extend my hand out, and I allow the wrist to flex in and out. So when I strike, I'm isolating those two major metacarpals as the main striking surface and the only striking surface utilized. So again, there's a phrase we utilize. The smaller the striking surface, the deeper the penetration. So now I'm going to utilize that same action. Now I'm going to allow that wrist to be flexible and pliable. So now when I bring up my target master once again, and I line it up, now I'm going to use a back knuckle so it flexes. So again, Bring it back in, aim focus, and back, bring it back in, and back. So again, the difference between the back fist and the back knuckle, hear the difference in sound? Listen, a back fist, hear the slap, a back knuckle, hear the thud, that's the difference. Now, this can be done to a multitude of targets. Certain styles teach it only, you only hit in the temple. No. You can hit the person in the temple. You can hit the person in the floating ribs. You can hit the person 
uh, uh, across the bridge of the nose. And again, the, also the configuration, not only of the weapon, but the different alignments. You can do this in a horizontal plane. You can do it in a vertical plane. You can bring it up in a stiff arm lifting motion. You can bring it in an inverted horizontal action, like I'm checking my watch to see what time it is. We can do this also in various diagonal planes, either with a stiff arm or a bent wrist, snapping motion. So, the back fist, of, by the way, in Cantonese, known as kwa choy, or kwa chui, uh, again, can be utilized in multiple angles. But for the sake of today's technique and drill, we're going to keep this with a outward horizontal back knuckle, or back fist. Back knuckle from, from uh, Ed Parker's orientation, again, to isolate those two major knuckles. Another weapon we can utilize, and again, uh, there's a wonderful phrase I say, that a sophisticated system of martial arts has extensive use of elbows and knees. The elbow, a hard, sharp, bony surface, is very dynamic and very devastating. Uh, and again, arts such as Kempo, uh, Muay Thai, uh, also systems of Kung Fu as well, uh, you have extensive use of elbows and they are devastating weapons to utilize. Now, in this case, what we're just going to do, we're going to do what's known as the inward elbow. Some styles call it the roundhouse elbow. Uh, again, some styles will come in with a full circular motion following through. Others will simply turn their wrist and strike them inward like so. Or again from here, following all the way through, moving inward or simply striking from this position, striking from this position. But irregardless of particular orientation, the, uh, the inward or roundhouse elbow, and again, like a roundhouse punch, moves in that circular fashion, a roundhousing action, is a devastating strike. Devastating. Uh, again, it can be utilized for many different targets. And the beauty of the use of the elbow, especially in this particular instance, is the small amount of space required to make it effective. Uh, again, we talk about the beauty of uh, being able to move with various actions. And uh, uh, in Kempo, we utilize uh, phone booth techniques. And in today's day and age with digital phones, there are very few phone booths left. But to be so close that I can be here and strike effectively with my elbow. The call of the Batman. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but again, that key ingredient of that in tight elbow. Notice how I turn my fist. So I it palm facing down, like so. And again, certain styles would have a much more circular motion in regards to that. But irregardless of that, the roundhouse elbow or uh, inward horizontal elbow is dynamic and devastating. Um, I've had instances where uh, various students, I had a young lady many, many years ago who was uh, getting attacked and assaulted and she ran her fingers through the person's hair. And then, boom, hit him with a sandwiching elbow. Shattered the man's nose, knocked him out cold. Devastating effect. But... That's another one of our natural weapons that identify us as a Kempo system. Uh, there are karate systems that will utilize this motion as well. But again, we say this is an orientation for the practical scientific street fighting art of Kempo, the law of the fist. So another weapon that we utilize is the knife hand, a.k.a. the sword hand, a.k.a. the axe hand. Any sharp implement that you use to cut whether it be a small knife to a large axe to a long sword, are all depicted in this particular hand configuration. Now here you'll see we tuck the thumb at the side of the hand, pressing it directly, and we curl all four of our fingers, pressing them tightly together with a slight curvature. Now some people will do this with different alignments, again a two-finger position, just a curled like almost like a claw position, uh, an eagle claw position. Again, as long as you're striking with this edge this meaty and you'll feel there's a pad there there's there's protection there there's a there's there's a, a, a piece of padding and protection and and muscle that, that enable us to have proper tension of it we can tighten that and strengthen that but for now we're going to place all five, four of our fingertips together and tuck our thumb along the side of our hand for this particular orientation of technique now you can chop in palm out you can chop out, palm down. You can chop straight in. You can chop in a vertical position to the, to the, the clavicle or collarbone. You can thrust a chop or you can make it a circular motion. In this case, like so. 
In this case, what we're going to do, we're going to do two configurations. We're going to do the outward hand sword. Opposite hand, opposite ear, the saying goes. Some styles will bring your hand all the way up to your ear and strike. Others will simply torque from this position in a vertical plane as opposed to horizontal. Chopping in or chopping out. But in this case, what we're going to do, we're going to do an outward chop. It's either done to the side of the neck or directly into the throat. Again, in order to throw, we have to curl our wrist to protrude that knife edge or hand sword. So, again, from here, again, I, I'm, I'm half Portuguese, half Puerto Rican, and our ethnic of, of, of you know, mom or dad giving you a backhand if you were a bad kid. Right? Hey, I'm going to backhand you. Right? Again, if you're playing tennis, a backhand strike. Again, if you're utilizing a baseball bat, one hand's moving in a backhand motion, another hand's moving in a forehand motion. But that key, that backhand action, that cross strike, it's coming across my body and striking out, coming across my body, striking out. That's the key. So again, and we said the opposite of out is what? In. I can chop palm up to the side of the neck or the floating rib cage. And again, I can strike out to the side of the neck, out to the floating ribs, out to the throat. Any of these particular targets can be utilized with this particular action. Now, that being said, we're going to take those individual... Hey, you say, Mr. Belt, you didn't hit anything with the elbow or the, or the knife hand. You're right. Let's hit something. So uh, if I take that uh, backhand I was talking about earlier, the knife hand, right? If I'm standing here talking to you, suddenly something grabs me by the shoulder, bang! Again, if someone's facing me and they're going to attack me and bring my hand up, maybe they grab my wrist. I free my wrist. Pow, chop. And again, I pull the hand in. Bam, chop straight out. I'm moving a target. Now this, again, this is very flexible. It's got a lot of give to it. It's got a lot of pliability to it. So again, you're able to work on the object, not break the apparatus, but you're able to be more accurate and exact in your targets. If I'm going to strike with my elbow, I can face in this configuration and come in this way. And again, from here, coming in this way and striking in. Wow, could I strike in and get with a back knuckle? Oh, we'll get to that in a moment, believe me. But this gives you an idea and an understanding of how the various actions work in regards to that. Now, so now let's take these, uh, these three and four tools. And what we're going to do is put them all together. Yes, indeed. Let's try it out. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to utilize another apparatus known as... Can you see him? Walk right on up here. Be Bob. And this is the Bob XL put up by Century. Um, we call it XL because it has this extra large extremity. Did I say that right? I just meant it's a full body bag. The original Bobs were only to the waist. Um, for us Kempo practitioners who do many strikes to the groin area. We needed a, a bag with a lower extremity so we could strike. Right? Again, um, there's a wonderful uh, video out there from uh, Master Ken and, he, and a comedy routine from the Out of America Dote. And he has a wonderful uh, video called 100 Strikes to the Groin. And uh, Kempo, what do we call that? A real good start. Practical system self-defense, grid is a sensitive, tender area. But we're not going to hit that today. What we're going to do, we're going to work on three of the basic tools that we just have discussed, and maybe even four if we have the time. And we're going to teach you a simple drill, a practical drill that you can do utilizing those three weapons. And they were the cross chop or outward chop, outward knife hand, outward sword hand, or hand sword, outward axe hand the inward elbow or roundhouse elbow, and the back fist or back knuckle. So as a practice drill we're going to do here is we're going to start off with a chop. Now, you chop a person in the throat. I, we, someone jokingly said to me, he was a, like, yeah, we teach some techniques in Kempo. We hit him in the throat and strike him in the groin. We kill him and then we hit him in the crotch. You know what? I've hit several people in, in the throat. I've watched people get hit in the throat and still live. Um, I'm always reminded of a classic film, Billy Jack, where Billy Jack blasts this one guy across the throat and kills him on the spot. Yeah? No. It, it, it depends on your skill level. It depends on your accuracy. It depends on your opponent. It depends on many different random factors. 
but it's a great tool for practical self-defense to strike a person in the throat. Again, the hands gravitate the way they feel pain, they stop the gag, they backpedal, you know, again, basically they're not attacking you any longer. So we're going to start with that. So again, from here, um, I'm facing, I may, might have my hands up, I might be just scratching my belly button, checking for lint, and suddenly one, more practice, one, 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 I practice it, I work on my chop, I bring it from the low section, come up, strike directly into the throat. Now, right from here, Kempo, another element that's very important, within Kempo is the understanding of using multiple strikes with the same limb, with the same hand. So in this case, my first strike is going to be that cross knife hand to the throat. From there, I'm going to utilize a collapsing action and strike with an inward elbow to the side of my opponent's head. From here, I'm going to come out with a back fist or back knuckle like we talked about earlier. Notice my other hand is checking this possibility of my opponent striking, but we'll get to that shortly. We just want to work this first drill. So, one, two, three. See it again. One, two, three. Again, chop, elbow, back fist. Chop, elbow, back fist. Chop, elbow, back fist. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, what's going to happen is when I strike with that inward elbow, that's going to be the button. And one of the principles we talk about in the art of Kempo and its various incarnations is known as the button and the lever. The button is the point of your elbow making contact, in this case with my opponent's temple, and that in turn activating the lever of my limb to utilize an outward back fist or outward back knuckle. So again, I chop, I elbow, there's my button, there's my lever. One, two, three. I can move in toward my opponent, I can move out and away. I work these different ranges and distances in regards to this series of actions. So one, two, three. If I can do it with my right, could I do it with my left? Of course I can. So I switch sides, and again, I chop with my left, I strike in with my elbow, out with my back fist. Chop, elbow, back fist. Chop, elbow, back fist. Chop, elbow, back fist. If you're familiar with uh, being a, a, a playing with various children's toys as a child, uh, there was one device called a devil stick, which had a series of three sticks, and you had two sticks you held on, and you had one stick with like different fla uh, flails of tassels uh, at the end, and you would bounce the stick back and forth to try to keep the stick in the air between the other two sticks you were utilizing as that third devil stick would bounce back and forth. That action is, is very prevalent here. Again, chop, elbow, back fist. If I'm doing the opposite side, chop, elbow, back fist. And again, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And again, here as I'm striking, right, I could change the sequence, go two, three, one. I could do my elbow back fist and then drop to my chop. That's known as the rearrangement factor. When we learn this, the, still the, the basic adherence of sequences is still maintained with those three natural weapons. Now, if I understand that idea, we have an important feature we have to address. Sadly, Bob, I hate to be the bearer of bad news to you. You ain't got no arms, man. Right, so it's very difficult for us to be able to demonstrate a given technique without a limb to strike and block. So, now the birds in the bob. Let's go to our other apparatus over here. I see this bag over here. Hey, let's turn it around a little bit because what it's got is an arm. It's got an armature. Um, in Chinese, the term for dummies is jong. Uh, the wooden dummy you see popularized in the art of Wing Chun is a muk jong, a wooden dummy. But uh, what's great about this is I can add in a very important feature, and that feature is the arm. So I can use, in this case, an inward block. I can block in, I can chop out, I can elbow, I can back fist. So I'm using that block. I'm closing the door. So from here, I bring my hand out from a raised position. Maybe I, hey, I don't want to fight. Pow, I defend myself. So my hand is here and I drop, and I make, put this other hand in a checking position, just in case that other arm tends to come in, which it can and it may do, as we all know. So, I'm here, I'm going to put my chest right up on the armature. I'm going to step back, I'm going to block in, chop out, I'm going to shuffle in. I'm going to 
slide in, step in with my, my, my right foot, and then strike with the back fist. So again, I'm starting here. And I step back and I block in. Chop, elbow, back fist. That time I shuffled on the chop. So I can shuffle on the chop. I can shuffle as I move into the elbow. Again, I'm altering at which point I have to use a given foot maneuver or footwork in regards to that technique. Let's do that again, shall we? So I step back, I block in, I chop out, I shuffle in, elbow, back fist. So again, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, what if I wanted to change that timing we talked about earlier? So I step back, I block one, and I go two, three, four. Now I've shuffled in on my second motion. So that way I can do all three elements of my offensive given drill in tempo. So now, again, I place my hand here. One, I step back, establish a base, and block my other hands and check. But now I'm going to shuffle with that chop. And so now, one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. So I can change the sequence only in regards to my sh when, I, when I shuffle. The basic four tools that are taught in regards to that technique are still adhered to. Now, maybe I don't want to block with a closed fist. Maybe I want to parry it with an open hand. I want to redirect the person's path. So now I parry, chop, elbow, back fist. Again, stepping back, open hand, parry, chop, elbow, back fist. Notice the change in timing when I shuffle. Again, the basic tools of the original drill are still adhered to. That's the key. Hey, am I blocking to the inside of an arm or the outside of an arm? Yes. What do you mean? Well, again, by this armature, we're not telling you if it's right or left, are we? We're not telling you if you're blocking to the inside of an arm or outside of an arm. Kempo has certain laws regard, regarding that. First of all, if I'm blocking to the outside of an arm, I block at the elbow, not below it. The reason why to be concerned about it is not that you can't do it, but you have to be concerned about the possibility of the opponent, he, him, he or she, him, her, himself or herself, folding that elbow and attempting to strike you with the aforementioned elbow we taught earlier. If we block at or above the elbow, they can't strike us because my skeletal structure is frozen at that point. So if I'm working to see the outside of an arm, I block at the elbow, at or above the elbow, chop the throw, elbow, back fist. If I'm blocking to the inside of an arm, I may want to, I definitely want to block below the elbow, not above it, because I don't want the arm to fold in and hit me like that. So I block it here and freeze it in this fashion. But again, the basic sequence of the three strikes does not change. The only thing I have to be concerned of if I'm blocking to the inside of an arm is second arm. And of course, the possibility of either of his legs striking me as well. But the key ingredient here is that the whether it's to the inside of an arm or the outside of the arm, the key ingredient is this basic pattern. Whether I'm using a closed fist to block or an open hand to parry, it's still there. It's still utilized. It's still effective. That's the key. Now, you say with that other hand, gee, what, what could I do with that other hand? Well, if, if I step back and block in with this hand, could I grab this hand? Because after all, I, want, I don't want him to hit me with this. So I can also step back and block it with a grab, chop, elbow, back fist. Technique still remains the same, but now I'm controlling this. I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring this hand, as one particular art says. I'm, I'm making sure that person doesn't hit me with that limb. Also, if I do Kenpo Jiu Jitsu, I can also go into different wrist locks and arm bars and throws and takedowns once I make that physical contact in a grabbing fashion with my opponent's limb. And again, whether it's the inside of a right or the outside of a left, I can still grab that limb and work it from there. That's the beauty of it. Now, um, when we deal with this, I'm going to go back to our buddy. Thanks for the help. I'm going to take my strong arm, roll it to the side here. I'm going to bring my other buddy back here, Bob. Come on over. Da, 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 da. Okay. Originally, we were talking about this. Hey, Bob's facing me. What if he isn't? What if, in this instance, Bob's attacking me from the side? Bob's attacking me with a flank attack. Maybe he grabs my shoulder. Maybe, maybe, he, maybe he's doing a side choke to me. 
Maybe, maybe he's just grabbing me to yank me toward him, to yell in my ear. Could I not do the same sequence? Sure I could. I strike here, I elbow directly the temple, back fist him right in the nose. Same drill, right? Right? Chop, elbow, back fist. Again, chop, elbow, back fist. Now, you say, well, what if he's on the side and he tries to throw that punch? Well, again, we block with the arm here. Chop, elbow, back fist. That same drill we did earlier with the, uh, with the strong arm dummy could be done with this. Right? Again, guy throws a punch from the side, block, chop across the throat, elbow in the temple, back fist right across the ridge of the nose. I never worked out his name. I'd I do a ton of things from there, but I'm a nice guy. Aren't you lucky, Bob? Sure you are. Hey, could I chop him in the throat, hit him in the mastoid in the back of the brain stem where it meets with the spine and then strike him with the back fist directly across the bridge of the nose? Sure I could. Again, the beauty of the sequence, the beauty of the drill is your ability to be able to utilize it against a multitude of scenarios. That's the key. Now, when we look at this, hey, we talked about something earlier. We talked about the inward hand sword. So if I'm facing Bob here, Bob, could I chop in, chop out, elbow, back fist, in, out, elbow, back fist, in, out, elbow, back fist. Hey, maybe I want to chop twice to the same side of the neck. Chop in, chop out, elbow, back fist. Right? Chop in, chop out, elbow, back fist. Now I'm chopping inward, palm up to the side of the neck. I'm chopping outward to the throat. I'm elbowing to the temple and back fisting to the other temple. I could also chop both the side of the neck twice, one, two, and then drop in elbow back fist, one, two, right hand moving inward, palm out, left hand moving outward, palm down. For every move, theory, concept, principle, or definition in Kempo, there's an opposite and a reverse. There's the key. So again, oh, did I add a heel palm in there? One, two, three, slap back fist, oh boy, now I'm really getting sophisticated. Now I'm really learning how to move in these various actions, the way the body works. Chopping in, chopping out, elbow, back fist. Chopping in, chopping out, elbow, back fist. Get the idea yet? Now, if you understand that, you can do this to any apparatus. You can do this to any bag. You can do this in a multitude of attacks. It's not limited to one particular attack or another. It gives you that ability to take these toys and play with them. So we've given you originally three basic tools. Chopping out, side of the neck or the throat, inward elbow, back fist. Then we gave you a defensive action. We taught you how to block with a closed fist and then move into your sequence of actions or parry with an open hand and then move into these given sequences of actions. By the same token, later on, we taught you how to chop in, palm up, chop out, palm down, elbow, back fist. And we can do it in place. We can chop in, chop out to the side of the neck, elbow, back fist. Or we chop, chop into the side of the neck, chop out to the throat, elbow, back fist. And we can do this with either hand. Again, stepping back, blocking in, chopping out, elbow, back fist. Parrying in, chopping out, elbow, back fist. Chopping into the side of the neck, out to the side of the neck, elbow, back fist. We can chop into the, we can chop into the side of the neck, chop out to the throat, elbow, back fist. And notice how that second hand moves below. So as you're occupied with one, I strike with the other. Elbow, back fist. That collapsing elbow into your back fist. That devil stick analogy, that seesaw-like motion. Well, I hope you got some insight out of this. I hope you had some fun with it. I know I have fun teaching this to you. Uh, this is Joe Rebello, and again, uh, we're wearing the uniform for the Kempo International www.kempo-international.com. Check us out. Uh, again, also check us out through our various cable systems and uh, YouTube as well. And I hope you got something out of today's class because I have get something out of teaching you every time I do. Uh, again, if you are interested, contact me at kempojoe at aol.com. You can also reach me on Facebook at Joe Rebello or Rebello's Kempo Karate. 
Uh, we're also available on Instagram as well. And we also are available on Twitter and Kenpo Joe underscore Rebello. R E B E L O. Until next time, this is Joe Rebello for Rebello's Kemp Karate. And remember, as always, keep training.